Hi guys, in today's how to video, we're going to look at the functionality of diverter valves. So what you can see is these different diverter valves. This one here works on a valiant and it uses an actuator without a spring. This is based from a Baxi Ideal design, which uses an actuator and a spring. And this one uses a diaphragm. So there's no actuator, this uses the cold water pressure for it to function. So these are what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to start with the valent diverter valve. So on this diverter valve, this is fitted on the return on the boiler. So what it does, this is the return here for the central heating. So what it does, it returns this way, flows this way, across here, this then goes to the pump. So you could say this is the common return for the heating and the hot water. So that goes to the pump and returns back to the main heat exchanger. Now this is the back of the valve, diverter valve. And this port here is for the hot water return. And this is the return back from the plate heat exchanger. So in heating mode, this is closed off. So if you look carefully here, you can see that seal basically that's shut. So that means the return from the plate heat exchanger cannot return back. So there's no movement, no flow through the primary water through the plate heat exchanger while the heating is on. So this actuator motor here is pushed in. You can see it through that hole there. That shaft pushes it in, closes off the port for the hot water, as I just said, and then opens the port for the heating return, which through this gap here, through there and through there, it'll go that way across the valve, as I said, through here to the pump. Hot water mode, what will happen then is then the motor will pull this way in. It will close off this port here for the return for the heating. So that's closed off. And then the other end of the valve, this end will be open. Then that will allow flow to go this way, the return for the plate heat exchanger that way across here to the pump then that will go to the main heat exchanger down the flow into the plate heat exchanger and then the return will find its way this way and that will be the circuit for the hot water what we're going to look at now is some fault finding or some common faults on this diverter valve now this diverter valve uses the actuator motor as i said before to move in and out look at an example of the hot water not working so basically if you run a hot water tap by the fires up but the hot water is cold that means that this valve is not opened so because it's not opened it's not going to allow the flow or the return solid to go in this way into the valve and across to the pump so if that's closed you're not going to get no circulation through the plate heat exchanger and that's because the actuator motor has failed in that position so what's really going on is that the heating is now getting hot because this is now open so that means the return on the heating can circulate and the radiators will start to get hot thus the cold water hot water sorry is cold now on the heating side it can also fail basically the opposite so on central heating you put the heating on while the fire's up like it should demand comes on now what's happened now is that the return here should be open to allow circulation around the heating but what's in that actually happened that return port is now shut off 
the valve is stuck in that position so there's no circulation on the return side of the heating that's because this one is now open so basically what's happening now the return for the plate heat exchange is going that way across through the main heat exchanger back through the plate heat exchanger and it's just circulating round that meaning there's no circulation on the heating so the boiler will just fire up for maybe a minute and then go off because it's got too hot because it's stuck in hot water mode and just circulating round that so they're the two big things how this diverter valve can fail in either hot water or heating the other big problem that you can have with this diverter valve that they can leak so basically they can be leaking from this area here or from this area here dripping down losing system pressure so that's basically it about this diverter valve on the valium which i said is fitting on the return side of the boiler now we're going to look at a different setup this is using mainly on the backsy and the ideal type diverter valve arrangement now on this particular arrangement the diverter valve setup is on the flow as opposed to the vein on the return so we've got the actuator motor but on this system we've got a spring as well when the vein it doesn't have a spring so we've got a spring and the spring is used for the hot water function but you can see now this is my little demonstration of what's inside the diverter valve cartridge as you can see you can see the actuator so in hot water mode it sits like this and you've got these two um, seals here and here so basically the top one is for the hot water basically flow and the bottom one is for the central heating flow so what happens in hot water mode basically the motor will be at rest and it will stay like this you can see the spring is not depressed it's fully up so this is the position it'll sit at because we always have hot water on demand on heating mode the actuator motor will then be actually will energize and then the motor will go like this and it'll go down like that so what's happened the top valve is now shut off the port to the hot water flow and open the bottom port which is the central heating flow and that will go around the radiators so what you can see here now is a divert valve body so on the right hand side that's the main primary flow coming from the main heat exchanger so that will flow across the body here this way and come out there that's going to the plate heat exchanger that's a flow which will go across the plate so that's at rest with the spring up as shown before so the ports open for the hot water at the same time the heating flow is shut off so that's how it flows in the hot water through this casting now we're going to look at the heating so the same thing again it's going to come in from the primary flow on the right so instead of going across the casting this way like i said before for hot water it goes downwards to the radiators that means the hot water flow is shut off and then the port open for the heating is open that then goes to the radiators as i just said so from this angle you can see that's the flow pipe going through to the plate heat exchanger for hot water and then for the heating flow it's just going to go straight down there for the radiators and also you can see here that's the primary flow coming in which like I said, via the, the washers, um, the seals, either go down to the radiators or across to the plate. Now we're going to look at some common faults on this type of arrangement. So, 
more like the valent really, um, like I said about the valent. For hot water, the actuator motor here, that can fail in either heating or hot water. So obviously for hot water, if you're not getting hot water and it's coming out cold, the boiler's firing up and everything, that means the valve could be down like this. And that means the hot water is shut off. The heating is open and it's gone round the radiators instead of the plate heat exchanger. So that in this situation, the flow will be getting hot in hot water mode. And for heating, um, the opposite way around. So if you put the hot water on, sorry, if you put the heating on, you want the heating to come on, basically the valve should be like this, but it won't, it'll be like this, so it's in hot water mode. So that means the heating is cut off here, open to the hot water. That means it's gone round the plate heat exchanger. The boiler just fight for a short while, get hot quick, because the actuator is not moved. So that's either because the actuator motor had failed or the spring's stiff, something like that. But that's the type of situation you're going to find. The other problem what you could get is the um, actuator, sorry, the um, cartridge leaking. So what will happen, water will come out here, leak through. It can sometimes damage the actu actuator motor. This will leak down the body of the valve like that. So that's another common fault you could get. So watch out for that one. This is the actuator motor. So you can see it's down. So that means it's in a hot water mode when it's down like that. And when it's pushed right up, it's in central heating mode. So that's it on this particular type of diverter valve and actuator motor. Now we're going to look at this particular diverter valve, which is totally different to the other two. This has a diaphragm, it has no electrics to operate it. It works purely from the cold water mains pressure. So let's look at the hot water function on this valve. So for hot water, what you've got, this is a cold water main. So when the tap's opened, it goes this way, as it goes through there, it pushes the diaphragm up. That pin, there's a micro switch on top of that. That micro switch is activated and starts the hot water sequence. That's turn on the pump and fan, etc. ignition. This then carries on to the plate heat exchanger to get hot. So that does that. So when it pushes up, it also pushes this as well. That goes up. So what you got here, these ports, this is your primary port from your main heat exchanger flow coming in. So on hot water mode, what that'll do, it will open this valve there, that'll be opened and then that'll flow to the hot water heat exchanger to get hot. This is the heating side, the flow for the heating. Because it's gone up like that, it will close this off. So the circulation will go this way, that way, and that way to the plate heat exchanger. So that's for the hot water. So for the heating, what we've got, obviously there's no movement of water here, so this is going to stay the same in that position. Because that's in that position, that means looking at the hot water, that will be closed off, so that cannot get no flow going to the plate heat exchanger. So then what you've got is... This is the common flow, as I said, coming from the main heat exchanger. This valve is open here, so then it can just go straight here and down to the radiators. So that's going to be it on this video on diverter valves. 
hopefully you learnt something. So if you're not already subscribed, hit our subscribe button, also hit the like, and also hit the bell notification button for any future videos. So that's it from me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.